Based upon my own studies of the subject, the followers of Muhammad have turned him into a sinless human being, in similitude to Jesus. How accurate is their assertion? It was the later Muhammadan exegetes who created the dogma of Isma' sinlessness of Muhammad, in emulation of the Christian one regarding Jesus. This doctrine of Muhammad's alleged infallibility, impeccability, and sinlessness emerged slowly over the centuries. This doctrine, a total and undeniable perversion of reality and fact, is based only on dogma and not on any truthful record since the Qur'an and Ahadith themselves repeatedly and unequivocally state and show that Muhammad was only a man, a mortal, who suffered their strengths and weaknesses of fallibility and sinfulness. Muhammadan scholars have only themselves to blame for their unsuccessful endeavors at perverting and tampering with the historical and their own theological records by attempting to make Muhammad seem incorruptible and infallible contrary to the evidence at hand. These distortions of the reports of the Ahadith are contrary to the Quranic verses which repeatedly declared that Muhammad was only a human messenger subject to human frailties and temptations. Ali Imran 3.144 Muhammad is no more than an apostle. Many were the apostles that passed away before him. Al-Kahf 18.110 Say, I am but a man like yourselves, but the inspiration has come to me that your Allah is one Allah. This verse shows clearly that Allah was already known as a God of the pagan Arabs long before Muhammad and his Quran. The only difference is that Muhammad insisted that Allah is one deity without any associates. Al-Anbiya 21.35 Every soul shall have a taste of death, and we test you by evil and by good, by way of trial. To us you return. Al-Ghafir 40.55 Patiently then persevere, for the promise of Allah is true, and ask forgiveness for thy fault and celebrate the praises of thy Lord in the evening and in the morning. Al-Ahqaf 46.9 Say, I am no bringer of newfangled doctrine among the apostles, nor do I know what will be done with me or with you. I follow but that which is revealed to me by inspiration. I am but a warder, open and clear. Al-Fatih 48.1 Verily, we have granted thee a manifest victory that Allah may forgive thee thy faults of the past and those to follow. Some of the commentators take this to mean sins committed by Muhammad before his call and after it. Others refer to the word to the liaison with the Coptic handmaiden Mary and to his marriage with Zainab, the wife of his adopted son Zaid. None of the commentators that have been researched, including Al-Bayzawi, Al-Jalalain, Al-Kamalan, and Hussein give the last interpretation. They all say it refers to his sins before and after his call to the apostleship. The hadiths are replete with sayings and stories that show Muhammad being as sinful as any other human being with similar weaknesses and strengths. Sahih al-Bukhari hadith 1.46, narrated by Ubada bin Samat. The Prophet said, I came out to inform you about the date of the night of Al-Qadr. But so and so and so and so quarreled, its knowledge was taken away, I forgot it. And maybe it was better for you. Now look for it in the seventh, the ninth, and the fifth of the last ten nights of the month of Ramadan. Muhammad, allegedly the greatest of the prophets, forgot the date of the most momentous instance of his life, the night when the first verse of the Quran was allegedly revealed to him by the angel Gabriel. Sahih Bukhari Hadith 1.394, narrated by Abdullah. The Prophet turned his face to us and said, If there had been anything changed in the prayer, surely I would have informed you. But I am a human being like you, and liable to forget like you. So if I forget, remind me. Sahih Bukhari Hadith 8.388, narrated by Aisha. The Prophet used to say, O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from the affliction of the fire the punishment of the fire, the affliction of the grave, the punishment of the grave, and the evil of the affliction of poverty, and cleanse my heart from all sins. Sahih Muslim Hadith 3-8 narrated by Abu Huraira. The Messenger of Allah said, 
I found myself in Hijr as the Quraysh were asking me about my night journey. I was asked about things pertaining to Bayt al-Maqdis, which I could not preserve in my mind. I was very much vexed, so vexed as I had never been before. Then Allah raised it, Bayt al-Maqdis, before my eyes. I looked towards it, and I gave them the information about whatever they questioned me. Yet again, Muhammad, the alleged greatest of all the previous prophets, who had only hours earlier just returned from his night mythical journey, already forgot what the Temple of Solomon looked like, although he had just declared that he had led all the other prophets in prayers there a few hours earlier. Moreover, the listeners should be made aware that in the days of Muhammad there was no Temple of Solomon in existence, since it had already been destroyed by the Romans 550 years earlier. Muhammad was blatantly deceiving and lying to his followers. Sunan Abu Dawood Hadith 5036, narrated by Abu al-Azhar al-Anamari. When the Apostle of Allah went to his bed at night, he would say, O oh Allah, forgive me my sin, drive away my devil, free me from my responsibility, and place me in the highest assembly. Sunan Abu Dawood Hadith 5043, narrated by Aisha, Umm al-Mu'mineen. When the Apostle of Allah awoke at night, he said, There is no God but thou, glory be to thee. O Allah, I ask thy pardon for my sin, and I ask thee for thy mercy. Al-Tabari 6.75 Messenger, how did you first know with absolute certainty that you were a prophet? He replied, Two angels came to me while I was somewhere in Mecca. One angel said, Open his breast and take out his heart. He opened my chest and heart, removing the pollution of Satan and a clot of blood, and threw them away. And last but not least are the satanic verses that he uttered as reported by Ibn Ishaq, Sirat Rasulullah, as well as by Al-Waqidi and his Ashab al-Nuzul, Ibn Sa'ad in his Kitab al-Tabaqat al-Kabir, Ibn Jarir al-Tabari in his Monumental Islamic History of the World, Bukhari Hadith 6.385 and others. Originally, the Quran followed Al-Najm 53.19. Have you seen Lot and Uzza and another the third goddess Manat. These are the exalted cranes, Gharanaq, intermediaries, whose intercession is to be hoped for. These verses were later abrogated and edited out and replaced with 53.21. What? For you the male sex and for him the female? Behold, such would be indeed a division most unfair. There are hundreds more ahadith that reflect very badly upon Muhammad's character that no one can actually challenge since they were not written by his enemies but the, by the Muhammadan Muslims who had absolutely no reason whatsoever to make him deliberately look bad.